In an important passage of Tower Perpetual Peace, Kant comments on his first definitive article, the civil constitution in every state shall be republican, to make sure that the republican constitution is not, quote, confused with the democratic one, as commonly happens, end of quote. The conflation is to be avoided, explains Kant, because the democratic form of sovereignty, unlike the oligarchic or the autocratic monarchical ones, is the soul that, quote, in the strict sense of the word, is necessarily a despotism. For the contemporary reader, Kant's distrust of democracy may come as a surprise. His moral philosophy seems to be committed to a strong notion of equality among human beings, hence, it is reasonable to assume, among citizens, regardless of how this ideal may be in tension with his belief in passive citizenship. The same commitment to equality and self-rule seems to emerge from the enthusiasm that the French Revolution, Kant tells us, cannot fail to spark in any disinterested observer, despite the philosopher's notorious denial of people's right to rebel against even the worst ruler. Most importantly, Kant endorses Rousseau's basic tenet that no law can be legitimate unless it can, at least in principle, enjoy the consent of all consociates, a principle that sounds even more demanding, we would say more democratic, than current criteria of political legitimacy. In other words, any law, constitutional or ordinary, is legitimate only if it can be consented to by all, at least in principle. Now, if Kant subscribes to this demanding criterion of legitimacy, how can he criticize democracy? A popular way out of the puzzle has been to say that Kant despises not democracy per se, but direct democracy. Only in a direct democracy, so the argument goes, would we witness the mechanisms feared by Kant of one faction imposing its will against another. But in a system with delegates, which is often taken as equivalent to what Kant means by representative system, and even more in a system with constitutional guarantees, this risk would be prevented. However, the defect that Kant attributes to direct democracy, properly understood, also affects what we would call representative democracy. In fact, the deepest layer of Kant's reservation is that democracy authorizes, if not encourages, political actors to advance private slash partisan interests as opposed to ruling from the perspective of the general will. For Kant, this authorization makes the system intrinsically non-representative and, as such, despotic. One may wonder, why democracy in particular? Well, despite appearances, Kant has good grounds to think that only democracy, unlike monarchy or oligarchy, has this defect and that it has it necessarily. While monarchs and oligarchs are not allowed to pursue private interests, they are at least expected to pursue the common good, quite independently of whether this is precisely what they often fail to do, albeit covertly, democratic political actors, electors, and to a certain extent also elected ones, are allowed to advance private interests. Only in a democracy are political actors allowed to make a strategic use of their political rights as opposed to pursue the common good. As Kant puts it, they display an attitude diametrically opposed to that of Frederick II's style of ruling, that of being the servant of the state that is, of serving only the general good and no private interest. The fact that in a democracy all can pursue partisan interest and do so with an equal share of powers, one's vote, may lead one to believe that private interests somehow cancel each other out and the majoritarian preference will ultimately serve the common good. But this is for Kant a mere chimera, 
or at least an ungrounded hope. Only if democratic citizens are educated to use their power to advance not their private interests, but the common good, will democracy be salvaged by its intrinsic tendency towards a privatized, hence despotic, exercise of political power. And the point is of course valid not only for direct democracies, but also for democracies with delegates. Kant thus has good reasons to indicate that democracy has an intrinsic risk of becoming despotic, and we need to be aware of that if we want to steer the political system in which we live away from the generation.